Hey everybody, welcome back to the Thinking Crypto channel. I have some very big updates to share with you all. I want to talk about Bitcoin and where we are on track with the bull market because obviously we had a huge correction and we see that Bitcoin whales, the data showing Bitcoin whales are buying the dip. And in addition, Kathy Wood from ARK Investments, she's still holding her price prediction of $500,000 Bitcoin price, not uh, in the immediate, obviously, but long term. And Ripple has a huge partnership with the National Bank of Egypt. This is really a huge partnership, despite the SEC lawsuit and Michael Arrington weighs in on XRP and the Federal Reserve presidents from different states have recently put out comments about the crypto market which I find very intriguing that they're acknowledging the crypto market and finally PayPal's developers are working on something with Bitcoin and obviously we know PayPal they, they've started to um offer crypto trading and, and all those things and Venmo as well. So we're going to break it all down. Before we get into it, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button, leave a comment below and hit the subscribe button if you're new here. It helps support the channel and it doesn't cost you anything. Guys, friendly reminder, I have a free weekly newsletter link in the description. Please sign up. It helps support the channel and it doesn't cost you anything. Uh, Michael Arrington, I'm interviewing him this week. The interview should be live on Friday. You don't want to miss it. Obviously, founder of TechCrunch, Crunchbase, and Arrington XRP Capital, the man's invested in crypto. So uh, we will discuss all things, even Elon Musk, all, all the, everything that you can think of. And, and maybe when is the next release of his photos of Brad Garlinghouse, which we've seen some. So you don't want to miss that interview, guys. Make sure you got the notification bell enabled. So nothing happening with the crypto market here, just red across the board. I personally bought the dip. That is not financial or investment advice. Obviously, this market is huge, hugely volatile. If you're new to it and it scares you, then take it easy. Just learn the cycles, understand what's happening. And you may have seen this meme I shared earlier on Twitter. <laughs> I just bought the dip, but it keeps dipping. Right? <laughs> you know, it's it's hard to call the bottom. It's hard hard to call the top. But um, you know, when there is extreme fear, like there is now. This is the time to be buying, right? Um, you just look at investment principles when there's blood on the streets, be a contrarian, of course. Um, when people are getting overly bullish, you want to do the opposite. When people are very bearish and scared, you want to do the opposite, right? Now, obviously, the caveat with that is you need to understand what market cycle we're in. Right now, we're in a bull market, so we're expecting higher prices despite this correction. Um, but if we were in a bear market where the price keeps going down, you don't want to be too bullish there, right? Unless, like, you're shorting or something um, but I, I personally don't do any leverage trading but context is important but in the bull market dips are for buying <laughs> um, and plan B the creator of the stock to flow model tweeted the following update with the with the on-chain signal 60k was not the top for Bitcoin so he said just to be clear I do not think 60k was the top Far from it, because I do not see the kind of transactions that normally happen after an all-time high, which is the red dots that are signaled on the chart here. In fact, I think we are just a couple of months out of the bear market, the blue dots. And yes, this on-chain view fits the stock-to-flow model and stock-to-flow model X. So we are just halfway in the bull market. There's another leg up. I know that's hard to see right now because especially those of you who are new are like, what in the world is going on? Bitcoin was 60K, now it's down to 30, right? Uh, but this is the volatility we've talked about on this channel for years. The swing highs and the swing lows. The same swings that take us very high, they also take us low. So it's a matter of understanding the market from a macro level. That's why I point you guys to the stock to flow model. And you may say, well, why are we only looking at the stock to flow model for Bitcoin? Well, Bitcoin moves the market. The data shows that. That, that is fact. Whether you hate, love, whatever Bitcoin, for Bitcoin, right? Um, Bitcoin moves and the altcoins follow. So Bitcoins crashes, the altcoins follow. Clearly, that's taking place. So that is why we need to look at these macro level charts because the market, for the most part, has followed Bitcoin's halving cycle where you have the supply and demand shock, right? And the economics playing out. But eventually, I think as the market matures, they will be decoupling. And I think uh, altcoins will move, um, some of them at least, outside of Bitcoin. But when that happens, I don't know. Maybe that's five years from now, the next cycle, who knows, right? It's hard to tell at this point. But check this out. Bitcoin whales 
feast as Bitcoin price and a wider market melt down. Panic selling crushes the entire crypto market, sending Bitcoin's price to $30,000 for the first time since February. But data shows Bitcoin whales bought the dip. That's how smart money operates. You do the contrarian move, right? The people are running scared. You do the opposite. You buy at that point. So data from Cointelegraph Markets and TradingView shows that the initial price dump that pushed Bitcoin below the $43,000 support level on May 18th accelerated into the overnight trading session as $110 110, $110 billion worth of trading volume fuel, the wick down to $30,000. Um, so here the article continues to say that the market downturn sparked outages and other delays across a few of the top cryptocurrency exchanges and the prices of the vast majority of altcoins cratered alongside the price of Bitcoin with Ethereum briefly plunging to $1,900 and Dogecoin bottoming out at uh, 20, just over 23 cents. So as with any significant downturn in the crypto market, derivatives and leverage traders were hit especially hard by the rapid $8,000 price drop in Bitcoin that resulted in a record 10,525 Bitcoin being liquidated in one hour at the peak of the market squeeze. This is why I don't do leverage trading, guys. I mean, unless you really know what you're doing, right? So uh, it, it's 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 tough, man. It is rough. So um, as for what we can expect for Bitcoin next, some clues have uh, been offered by the team at Whale Map, which identified thirty-three thousand dollars as the new major support level for Bitcoin, with the previous support at forty-six thousand dollars now becoming a major resistance level should the price try to bounce higher. Um, and, uh, all coins off, like, you know, obviously follow that, but the, the, the whales have been buying guys. So further analysis from the team also highlighted support levels at $37,400 and $34,200 and indicated that such should the price continue to fall lower, it is crucial that the 29,000 support level hold, or the price could flush as low as $19,000. While a price dip below $29,000 may seem dire to some, Whale Map instead closed its analysis by stating, overall, this is a great, buy, a great dip buying opportunity with a clear invalidation, which makes it a great risk slash reward trade. So the big money, and, and here's an example, ARK Investments' Kathy Wood says Bitcoin will go to $500,000. They're looking macro level. And they're this, and we saw like it, there was a lot of whale buying last year as well when Bitcoin had dropped due to COVID to, you know, down to 3000 I remember buying some there too. I know I'm not a whale, but I did accumulate. And Kathy Wood said on Wednesday that Bitcoin is on sale now and that even after today's drop, the cryptocurrency is not necessarily at a bottom. She describes the market as emotional and says it is difficult to call the bottom, as I you know said at the beginning of the video. Um, she also stated here w w w that the prospects for a Bitcoin exchange traded fund approval in the U.S., this year have now increased because of the recent plunge in price. The odds are going up now that we have had this correction, she said. And uh, we'll see what the SEC does, but I'm hoping they do have um, you know, an ETF get approved. I'm hoping Gary Gensler does the right thing here. Uh, but she's still holding her price prediction of $500,000 long term, guys. Um, and, and that's how I'm looking at it, too. There's some Bitcoin I'm going to sell this market cycle and some I'm going to hold for future market cycles. But... Um, these corrections, these drops, obviously this one is a bit deeper because of the Elon Musk news. If we didn't have that news and then, you know, you had the China the 100th time banning crypto come and pile on on top of that. And the timing is, of course, always interesting. But nevertheless, um, I do think there's uh, more more bull run to go here in this market. Now, check out this Ripple news. National Bank of Egypt and Lulu International Exchange connect through RippleNet to elevate remittance. Uh, experience into Egypt. Today, this is from their website, Ripple's website. We're excited to announce our partnership with the National Bank of Egypt, the North African uh, country's largest bank, through Ripple's global payments network and RippleNet. NBE has connected with the UAE based financial service provider Lulu International Exchange, part of the Lulu Financial Group, to process cross border payments from the United Arab Emirates to uh, Egypt. Guys, you see what's happening here despite the lawsuit and, and, 
remember, XRP has the regulatory clarity worldwide, except for the United States with this BS lawsuit. And check out what Michael Arrington had to say. Um, XRP, he tweeted this just literally um, at 3.40 p.m. XRP is no slouch either. Despite an all-out attack by the SEC on Ripple, XRP has largely shrugged off the drama. It rose 160% in Q1, matching Ether's spectacular rise. So obviously, we all benefited from that rise. And as I stated at the beginning of the video, this is the data Bitcoin crash, and it pulled the altcoins with it. So uh, that's why we need you know, uh, Bitcoin to do well overall, not to say that these specific altcoins like XRP can't pump, uh, but it follows the momentum of Bitcoin. Now, check this out. Federal Reserve Bank presidents, cryptocurrency sell off, not a systematic concern does not affect Fed policy. Now, it's interesting that they were asked about this, but um, you have like two of them weighing in on this. I, I think it's very interesting. Um, cryptocurrency sell. Oh, wait, that's that they repeated the same quote there. So let me share something here. So two Federal Reserve Bank presidents have commented on the steep sell-off in cryptocurrencies Wednesday. St. Louis Federal Reserve President James ba Bullard, who firmly believes that crypto cryptocurrencies pose, uh, excuse me, cryptocurrency poses no threat to the U.S. dollar, said. By itself, I don't see that as a systematic concern. At this point, we are all quite aware that crypto can be volatile. So interesting that uh, they're saying this. Um, also, another Federal Reserve Bank president who commented on the cryptocurrency sell-off Wednesday was Atlanta Fed President Rafael Bostic, uh, making a similar statement during an interview with Bloomberg TV. He said, there's a lot of volatility in it, but right now it's not at a scale and doesn't have a reach uh, into the economy that has a system that has a systematic implications for us. So they recognize the volatility. They recognize the asset class. They recognize that its volatility doesn't affect them or what's going on. So the point is, these people are talking about the crypto market like it's normal now. I think that's bullish, and they they know what's happening. They're paying attention for sure, and obviously they're using the technology to build their CBDCs. Now, check this out. PayPal developer, the respective handle on Twitter, said our very own um, Daniel Brain will give a talk on building Bitcoin in JavaScript. This talk will explain how Bitcoin works under the hood, and he'll live code a Bitcoin-like implementation in JavaScript to explain the fundamentals and help you understand it from the ground up. Guys, PayPal has their developers doing stuff with crypto and Bitcoin and, 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 and talking about it, educating the masses. See what's happening here? Obviously, we know they launched their crypto trading services in, in late last year and they just rolled out for Venmo. But they're, they're now pushing the ecosystem, the knowledge, guys. So bullish. So bullish. Um, I hope you see what is taking place here right before our eyes. And this is why when I look at the market today, I'm like, oh, man, my portfolio is down. But I'm not concerned macro level long term i know higher values are coming the same way we talked about it years ago um i got in 2016 the values are higher than they were then um and and um we're making money right obviously if you bought the, you bought at the right time you don't want to buy the top of the market that's how dumb money operates smart money buys when the market is like this in the dips in the red blood on the streets that is when you buy um so i've been accumulating all through the bear market and now my portfolio is up significantly. Now, obviously, there's going to be a point where I do want to cash out where we are near the top. Um, no one can call the exact top, but you want to cash out in stages on the way up. So, guys, what do you think about this news? Um, are you uh, buying the dip? <laughs> As the meme says here, I just bought the dip, but it keeps dipping. What do you guys think? Leave your thoughts in comments below. Hit the thumbs up button. Share this video. And I'll talk to you all later.